Welcome to another dot com lunch. Once again, we are here at Fobako. And it's 81 degrees right now. It's beautiful, it's sunny, and you know, everyone's wearing shades because you know, it's 21, it's 81 degrees. Only 21 degrees, only in California. So, you know, all my friends in Vancouver and and the frozen East Coast, well, you know, this, you know where you should be. It's so hot, look at Sally's wearing her pink pink shirt, with a pink Mercedes-Benz hat. Right, Sally? Yeah, she's color coordinated today. It's a good thing we have umbrellas because it is so damn warm. Oh, look at my poor friends in Vancouver. Look at that. Oh, it's tripping rain and only 48 degrees. Uh, hi guys, I'm Ed. I'm from Australia. Um, I'm about to launch an app called Glyph. It's going to be a location-based um, social network on mobile, so you can pretty much find cool f places to go, like from friends and find friends nearby. and. Yeah, it'd be a lot of fun. Um, actually, it'd be probably better if I do it after it's launched and I'll be making more sense. What's that? Preview. Preview. All right, well, wait for it. Next week, I'll come back with the, with the app. It's, a, it's in Apple now, so it's going to take about a week for them to register. And when it comes out, I'll talk more. It'd be really cool. Check it out. Sally's my mic. She's playing... Uh, what are you playing, Sally? She's playing uh, something like Minecraft and... I'm holding my mic. Minecraft. Minecraft, yeah. And she's moving the mic around. This is a good example of why you should really put the mic to yourself and not to Sally's hat. Yeah. Okay, today I'm not technically having pho. This is a special egg noodle soup. And normally pho is made from rice noodle, but I'm doing egg noodle, which is more of a Chinese, Cantonese, Asian type dish. But hey, you know, something different. It's still very, very good, and uh, it's still refreshing and healthy, appetizing. I like it. Got this little chip that Sally likes. Sally, you want a chip? Yeah, Sally takes the chip, of course, yeah. It's hot, but put it, maybe put it down somewhere. I don't know where, but put it down somewhere. Put it, here, put it. Oh, okay, yeah, that, that works too. There you go, just put it over there. Great, okay. Okay, this is Sally's dish, and yes, it's a very, very big dish. It's pork chop on broken rice with veggies, a soup, and a fish sauce. It's a lot of food. Sally's wondering, how am I gonna, how do you eat all that, Sally? Now, this is a yellow rice. It is a yellow rice, see? It's just, uh, once you add a little flavor to it, it'll be yellow. Yeah. So yes, she will eat all that. No, she won't eat all that. She just eat the pork chop and throw everything else away. You're wasting food, Sally. Recently, I watched a, uh, a movie on Netflix. It was called Inequality for All. And it stars the former Labor Secretary to President Bill Clinton. And as you can no doubt guess, the movie is about the growing gap between the rich and the not so rich and the disappearing middle class. And like the most movies, it's got some interviews happening and I, I noticed a few things strange in the movie. The first one, they had this couple who's talking about, you know, they can't make ends meet and the wife only got like $35 in her bank account and the husband has less than 100 bucks in his bank account and they're trying to budget now. And it shows them budgeting on their computer. Yes, a top of the line MacBook Pro. And I'm looking at this and going, okay, and I wonder why you only got $25 in your bank account, right? Inc. So I, I find it hard to have sympathy for, you know, people, for that kind of thing. It's like, oh yeah, I'm not working and I got no job, but I got the latest iPhone. I'm going to line up for five days at the Apple store for the Apple's newest iPhone. Right. And the other thing about income inequality that I noticed is that, see, especially this applies to Orange County. See, Orange County has one of the highest income inequality in America, along with San Francisco, New York, that kind of stuff. But Orange County, yeah. I think it's a special case because, see, a lot of Orange County residents are overseas immigrants coming in to live here. Now, you might think that those people will be in the upper end of the scale, and they're popping up in, and the people lower, so that, that's causing the income inequality. But actually, see, you're gonna understand income inequality is based on income, not based on net worth. These immigrants that's coming here, they have zero income. 
But you know, they have a lot of cash and they're buying houses for cash. But yet, what they're doing is they're making people's income go down because they have no income. You know, John, another thing with this income inequality thing, you pointed out some good, good things, but I've noticed, you know, Irvine has this master plan community and throughout every little hub or village, as they call it, there are low income housing where you have to apply and prove that you have no income or very low income. What's really funny about this place is, is that when you go and look around in the parking lot, for example, you'll see that they have brand new BMW, Mercedes, Cadillacs, and they have satellite TV and they they're have all these nice things, but yet they're not able to afford even a normal rent. So you have to wonder how are people, prior, how are people prioritizing their income? Speaking of income inequality, I just realized something. What? I have no income. Thank you, guys. <laughs> right. Well, I can't even get a mortgage. That's right. They're giving you a hard time about that, right? Exactly. So I have no income. So uh, basically, I'm on the I'm I'm on the low end of scale, like like all oh, everyone else. Yeah. So how come you're not whining about it? Nope. Yeah, I should be whining about it. I actually should go apply for welfare, maybe. <laughs>